Color grading is an essential step in achieving the desired look and mood for a film or video. Today, we'll be exploring the color grading process with the Hanser Pro, which is a powerful third-party plugin for DaVinci Resolve that allows us to emulate the aesthetics of classic film stock. They also have a version of the plugin for Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, After Effects, and also a mobile version of the plugin that you can download on your phone. But before we begin, I wanna make it clear that the Hanser Pro is not sponsoring this video. They simply sent me the product for me to review, and now I'm making a video because I want you guys to know how I've integrated it into my workflow and how great of a plugin it is, and it can elevate all your video content from short form content to films, commercials, short films, any video content that you might be working on, the Hanser Pro can come in super handy to help you achieve the look that you're going for. So let's get into it. So there are a few websites that color is used for the shot inspiration and research. I personally use Shot Deck, which is the largest collection of searchable images that are high quality for any movies and TV shows in the world. In my case, I use it for inspiration on the looks that I want to create. It's 100% a huge part of my process when it comes to color grading, pre-production for commercials and short films and anything that I might be working on. I'll make a separate video about it. If you want it, just drop it in the comments and I'll get right on it. In this case, I will be color grading an interrogation scene featuring some of my talented friends, Michaela Kane and TJ Christian. So for a reference, I will use some stills from the movie Seven released in 1995 which was shot on a Panavision Gold G2 and they use several different film stocks but the one that I care about the most is this 5245 7289EXR 50D which is a film stock with very particular characteristics you can see here that we have very cool tones and a lot of cyan and the skin tones are very punchy uh it's also a crime mystery thriller which is the kind of vibe that we were going for when we shot our interrogation scene so once you've selected your stills you're going to want to drop them into the timeline and then go to your color tab select them out of the clips right click it grab still and they'll come up right here on new stills folder that way you have them and you can quickly reference them along with your footage and you have something that you can aim for. Now, back to the color grading. For the purpose of today's video, we're going to have a pretty simple note tree. I like to name them so that I always know at a quick glance which one I want to click and work with. So we have nose reduction, white balance, exposure, saturation, and enhancer. So we're going to split this to exposure and saturation. And we're going to go ahead and right click, add node, and add a parallel mixer connect the inputs so there you have it this will be our node tree for the purpose of this video now we're gonna add the answer to the very last node and as you can see we have quite a few tabs that we can work with here inside the plugin we got input film film developer film compression expand print color head film grain halation bloom vignette film breath gate weave monitor output lot generator and some options i'll explain some of these which i will be using to color grade our footage but not all of them because that would take up too much time now when you first load up the plugin you'll notice that some of them are activated and you'll notice that they're already affecting our image what i want you to do is deactivate film grain so that we have a clean image to work with now before we even begin color grading it's super important to select the right color space transform and the answer makes it super easy to do this by allowing you to choose the source the camera you used and the color profile that you might have shot in so we go to the input tab and in this case i shot this footage with a red komodo 6k and the profile is red raw log 3g10 so we'll go ahead and click choose a camera choose red komodo 6k and ipp2 rwg log 3g10 standard to make sure that we have our footage in the proper color space now that we have our footage in the proper color space we're going to start with our primary adjustments to tile in the exposure that we want for our footage the reason i prefer working in separate nodes outside of the answer is because it allows me greater control over white balance exposure and saturation in a way that i'm familiar with it the answer has a same tools built into its plugin but i like it this way simply for the fact that it's what i'm used to so i like to start working with my primary wheels so right away you'll be able to tell that our image is pretty dark so we're going to move on to the primary wheels where you've got lift 
gamma, gain, and offset. All you need to know is that lift is shadows, gamma is midtones, gain is the highlights, and offset is the whole image. Each one of these has a color wheel, and if you select the dot in the middle and push it to one side, you're pushing it towards that particular color and saturating it in that direction. So you can tell, the more I push it, the more saturated that it becomes. Under each wheel is a jog wheel that you can pull to the left, or you can pull it to the right. To the left, it will bring down the luminance, and to the right, it will increase it. If we take a look at our image, we can tell that it's really dark and really warm compared to our reference, but it is in the proper color space and I also shot this footage raw, so I had already dialed in the correct white balance. For the primary adjustments, we will increase the gamma, which is the midtones, to about 0.04 and gain to about 1.07. So now that we've brightened up our image, we're gonna go ahead and click the three dots right here on the curves, select editable spines and add some more contrast back with the tone curve. Nothing too dramatic. We don't wanna create a full on S curve and we wanna keep an eye on our waveform scopes so that we make sure that we're not clipping any shadows and we're not clipping any highlights. One of the cool things that I love about the Hanser is that it has a monitor tab where you can select clipping indication, which will show you when something is clipping in the shadows or clipping in the highlights. So in this case, you can tell that those shadows in her jacket and in her shoulder here are a little bit beyond what we want it to be, but we're gonna keep it that way for now because we're still making adjustments. Now we'll come back to our saturation node in just a second. For now, let's work on the film profiles tab within the Hanser. Film profiles are the heart and soul of the Hanser. Each film is accurately sampled with all of its characteristics. So when movies are made, cinematographers use something called negative film. It's like a secret code that holds all the beautiful colors, but to see those colors properly, they need to print the film on special paper. That's how they unlock the true colors. So the Hanser figured out how to crack the code too. They make sure that those colors in the video are just right before you even load up anything. Now I have already gone through a lot of the different film stocks that they offer here and I love quite a few of them including Kodak Vision 3 250D as well as Agfa Agfa Color Portrait XPS 160. As you can see it gives this really nice tone to our image. This is even before color grading it fully. I also love Kodak Ektor 100 and one of my favorites, Kodak Portra 400, which is the one that we'll be using for this tutorial. The other huge component to the Hanser is the print film emulation. And while I'm not gonna dive deep into this one because it would take a whole other video dedicated to it, you get a few choices here. So we have linear, Cineum Film Log, Fujifilm 3513 print film, Kodak 2383 print film, and Kodak Endura glossy paper. In this case, we'll be using the extremely famous Kodak 2383 print film. To get us the closest to those cyan tones we want to achieve according to our film frame from Shot Deck. So if we look at both our images side by side, we can tell that we have a great contrast and exposure and we have a much more stylized look, but we're not quite there yet. One of the things that I can see is that we're missing some saturation in our image. So for our third node, saturation, I like to aim for a film-like saturation on digitally shot footage. What this means is that I want a more subtle and dense saturation that's pleasing to the human eye. To achieve this, I right-click the saturation node and select the color space of HSV, which stands for hue, saturation, and value color space. This means hue, saturation, and value are now mapped to your RGB channels, and everything that manipulates RGB will now manipulate these three aspects of our image. Then I right click, select gamma, select gamma 2.4. Then I right click one more time, select channels, deactivate channel one, go back, deactivate channel three. What we're doing essentially is disabling the hue and the value from the HSV channel so that only the saturation channel remains activated in respect to the controls I use. So now, instead of increasing the saturation right here, I will use the game primary wheel and bump it up to about one, 0.30 right around there i think it looks really good this is much more subtle with nice color separation if i toggle it off and then on you can clearly see the changes that i have made our next tool the color head which is where the magic really happens is inspired by photo enlargers and printer lights so you'll notice that we have quite a few options here 
we have yellow, blue, magenta, green, cyan, and red. And then we have tones, shadows, tones, mid tones, highlight tones, and preserve exposure and impact. So if we push yellow and blue in either direction, you can tell that to the left all the way is yellow and to the right all the way is blue. And you can also look at our scopes here on how the image is being affected every time that I push it in either direction. Yeah, we're getting more color separation, but the image just doesn't look that good. So the adjustments that we're gonna make here are gonna be very subtle. What we're gonna try to achieve here is to push the image towards a more stylized look to where we can get some of those tones in the walls, her skin tone, in the shadows, in the highlights to more accurately match our reference still here. Now, some of this was probably achieved with set design and you know the walls are probably actually that color, but we're gonna try to cheat it a little bit by using our color head here. So we're gonna push this towards blue, right around there, towards green. Again, keep an eye on this and keep an eye on the scopes. And like we talked about the initial reference image here, we have a lot of cyan tones. So we're gonna try to push for that, that cool cyan, okay? So now that you can see how we're pushing the image, we're getting somewhere. Next, we have the shadows tones. Toning adds a touch of style to the image enhancing the visual experience. In the Hanser Pro, I have the flexibility to adjust color temperature separately for shadows, mid-tones, and highlights, giving me complete creative freedom to craft the desired mood that I wanna achieve. So what I wanna do in this particular case is push the colors towards cyan and away from red, while also adding more blue and green tones to match our reference image. So we're gonna add more blue this way. It's actually pretty good right there. Look at the tones. I think some warmth into the tones would be good. Remember, to the right all the way is warmer, and to the left all the way is colder or cooler. In this case, I want to make it a little bit warmer. So we're getting we're pushing it a little bit very subtle adjustments. And for the highlights, we're actually gonna leave them as they are. So let's take a look at both side by side. And this is where we're at with our image. So we could probably still work on her skin tone. We're kind of missing some of that contrast and you know vibrancy to her skin tone. She kind of just doesn't have too much color to her. So we could probably bring some of that back. The walls are looking a little bit better and the overall image is kind of getting closer. So let's go back to just our image to the saturation node. And we're actually gonna turn up the gamma to about five, maybe right around seven, right around here. Turn down this about 20. We're using a very subtractive method where we're kind of just pulling from one side and then pulling from another side kind of just balance out what we're doing. Let's go back to the color head. And we're kind of just making adjustments as we go. When we warmed up the image here, we kind of brought back some of that warmth in the walls. We're gonna push it a little bit towards more of a cooler side right around there, a little bit more towards cyan. Okay, we don't want to make it too green, so we dial it back a little bit. And we're getting close, we're getting close. Some of those shadows and the tones, I'm not too crazy about. I'm actually going to dial it back again. Look at our reference. We definitely brought back some of those colors in her skin tone. Those walls are matching a little bit closer. I think we can still work it out a little bit more. Let's bring down those highlights in her skin tone. There you go, right about... Right about 50. I like to always push it all the way and then bring it back right about 50. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Let's go back to the enhancer. So I feel like the image is a little bit too green now. So we're gonna bring it back. It's just neutral right there. I'm gonna bring this back to about negative five and then introduce some blue into those shadows. And more right about there. Some blue into those highlights. Kind of cool it down a little bit. And to add contrast, we'll add about 0.5 of warmth to the mid tones. And if I toggle off the color head, you can tell that it made a humongous difference 
I mean, wow, look at that. That is insane. It made such a huge difference. I'm gonna dial back Shadow Stones for the blues. Just not too crazy about those bluish shadows. I like to keep my shadows clean. right on there i think that's a lot more neutral honestly color grading really is just going back and forth trying to figure out the best place for your image and i mean that's pretty that's pretty darn close right there i'm pretty happy with that so as you can tell we have a lot more tools here that we're not really touching one of my favorite ones is the lut generator so in some cases, exporting a grading look as a LUT file can be more convenient. The Hanser Pro's LUT generator enables us to export a grading look for further editing or real-time monitoring. This means that I can put it into my monitor whenever I'm operating my camera and I can sort of shoot to edit, which will give me a starting point for commercials and films. That way I can be able to tell what my end image might look like and i can dial in my exposure and my white balance in camera accordingly but again for the purpose of this video we will not be using these tools so if we look at our final look compared to our reference so we can see that we did a great job matching it as close as we could we'll clean up the image by adding some noise reduction and we'll be good to go that's what this note is right here we'll go to the noise reduction is three frames on link loma and chroma for spatial threshold and temporal threshold and we'll just bump up the chroma so right around 12. i like to not go above 12 for chroma let's just start getting some weird stuff happening so we'll put it just at the edge and again if i disable it right here in the detail especially in the wall wow you can tell just how much it cleaned it up It's insane. So now looking at it, we're gonna deactivate noise reduction, deactivate saturation, enhancer, and we're gonna start just one by one. So we started somewhere on here when we did our color space transform. Then we selected our film stock, which was Kodak Portrait 400. Then we went and selected our print film, which is Kodak 2383 print film. We enable it. We can tell that it's really dark. So we went ahead and did our exposure adjustments and we brought it back up. Then we went back to the enhancer and adjusted our color head to kind of get closer to that. We adjusted our saturation and that really brought together the entire image just with five nodes right there with noise reduction being the last one. Nah, I'm good. All right. I think the first thing I'm gonna do when I leave this room is give a call to Andy Leeds name sounds familiar it should in about two weeks time you're going to be appearing before him asking for parole It'd be a shame if we had nothing but bad things to say about you huh what do you think ruben do you want me to say bad things about you so as you can tell, the Hanser Pro was an invaluable tool through the entire process that helped me achieve the look that I wanted to go for. I think it's important to remember that color grading is an art that requires experimentation and creativity. So I suggest that you grab your footage, unleash your imagination, and let the Hanser Pro take your footage to the next level. If you like the plugin and you think it would be useful to you, then go ahead and visit thehanser.com to learn more about the Hanser Pro. And as a special offer, they've given me a discount code for you guys. So all you have to do is type Christian 10 to get 10% of your purchase. The plugin itself is $499 starting June 1st. And I think it's 100% worth the investment. It doesn't make my system crash. It sped up my workflow. So I think if you guys would like to check it out, I totally recommend it. If you like this video and you want to support the channel, make sure to hit the like button, drop a comment. Let me know if there's anything in this video that I did not cover that you would like me to make a video about next. You can also subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos. And I'll check you guys on the next one. Peace.